This presentation is about tunnel inverse analysis by observability method. The outlines are introduction and description of the methodology. There are multiple defects that may appear on the surface of the concrete tunnel lining. These defects can be classified into three types. The first one is mechanical. The configuration of the crack in tunnel lining are dependent on ambient stress variations. Moreover, the interactions between lining and surrounding rock and soil also affect the development of the cracks. For example, when a tunnel axis is perpendicular to the slope movement direction, shear deformation of surrounding rock and soil caused by slope movements occurs on the plane of the tunnel cross section. The second type of mechanical defects is, uh, is rupture on precast and the last one is seen steel frames or fiber. Other defect is chemical one which is related to carbonation and efflorescence. And other defect related to presence of water such as moisture, dripping and seepage. For direct analysis and design of a structure we have to use direct analysis and the general formula is F is equal ka times D. For 2D elements, we have 2 degree of freedom on each node since we have only vertical and horizontal displacement. Therefore, the size of a stiffness matrix is 2 times N by 2 times N. The procedure of direct analysis is that we have to create our finite element model with our non-mechanical properties. Second, we have to apply our design load on the structure and at the end by acquiring the deflection we can design the structure. From the other hand, it may happen in real structure that we face with kind of failure on the structure but the case is that we don't know what the material properties of the damaged area. In this case, in order to acquire mechanical properties of the structure, we have to use inverse analysis. A methodology to acquire mechanical properties of the existing structure and a structural system model according to some measurement is so-called structural system identification and in contraction form we can name it SSI. It means that we have to apply some load on a structure and measure deflections in order to obtain mechanical properties of the structure. Due to very intricate the structure of underground structures, many SSI models have been used for driving mechanical parameters of these kind of structures. For example, Bardacus in 2013 with the colleagues investigated the use of genetic algorithm in the back analysis of tunnel response in order to obtain improve estimates of model parameters by matching model prediction with monitor response. Santos and colleague in 2015 described a procedure to perform back analysis in symmetric manner in the context of aging tunnels. Their objecting was to identify a set of parameters that characterize the surrounding soil and the lining properties. There are two sort of identification approaches which are parametric and non-parametric methods. The parametric methods are based on the direct approach in which the parameters of an actual system model are used directly to represent physical properties of the structure. On the other hand, in non-parametric approach, the input-output relation is characterized and determined by a set of equations that may not have any explicit physical meaning. Lozana and colleague in 2013 proposed a new method of SSI in order to uniquely identify material properties of the structure such as Young modulus, moment of inertia and area, which are products of flexural stiffness, axial stiffness and torsional stiffness. Observability method is a deterministic static SSI method and has the advantages of less computation costs and a statistical method. Their method is applicable for building and cable state bridge if subset of deflections and forces at node is provided.
This presentation is about tunnel inverse analysis by observability method. The outlines are introduction and description of the methodology. There are multiple defects that may appear on the surface of the concrete tunnel lining. These defects can be classified into three types. The first one is mechanical. The configuration of the crack in tunnel lining are dependent on ambient stress variations. Moreover, the interactions between lining and surrounding rock and soil also affect the development of the crack. For example, when a tunnel axis is perpendicular to the slope movement direction, shear deformation of surrounding rock and soil caused by a slope movement occur on the plane of the tunnel cross section. Another type of mechanical defects is rupture and precast, and the last one is seen as steel frames or fiber. Other defect is chemical one, which is related to carbonation and efflorescence. And the other defect related to presence of water, such as moisture, dripping, or seepage. For analysis and design of a structure, we have to use direct analysis, and the general formula is F is equal ka times D. For 2D elements, we have two degree of freedom on each node since we have only vertical and horizontal displacements. Therefore, size of a stiffness matrix is 2 times n by 2 times n. The procedure of direct analysis is that we have to create our finite element model with our non-mechanical properties. Second, we have to apply our design load on the structure and at the end by acquiring our deflections, we can design the structure. From the other hand, it may happen in real structure that we face with kind of failure on the structure, but the case is that we don't know the exact mechanical par parameters of the damaged area are. In this case, in order to acquire mechanical properties of the structure, we have to use inverse analysis. A methodology to acquire mechanical properties of the existing structures and a structural system model according to some measurement is so-called structural system identification and in contraction form we name it SSI. It means that we have to apply some load on a structure and measure deflections in order to obtain mechanical properties of the structures. Due to very intricate structure of underground structures, many SSI models have been used for driving mechanical parameters of these kind of structures. For example, Verdacus and colleagues in 2012 investigated the use of genetic algorithm in back analysis of tunnel response in order to obtain improved estimates of model parameters by matching model prediction with monitored response. Santos and colleagues in 2014 described the procedure to perform back analysis in symmetric manner, manner in the context of aging tunnels. Their objectives was to identify a set of parameters that characterize the surrounding soil and the lining properties. There are two sorts of identification approach, which are parametric and non-parametric methods. The parametric methods are based on the direct approach in which the parameters of an actual system model are used directly to represent physical properties of the structure. On the other hand, in non-parametric approach, the input-output relation is characterized and determined by a set of equations that may not have any explicit physical meanings. Lozana and colleague in 2013 proposed a new method of SSI in order to uniquely identify material properties of the structure, same as Young modulus moment of inertia and area, which are products of flexural stiffness, axial stiffness, and torsional stiffness. Observability method is a deterministic static SSI method and has the advantages of less computational cost than statistical methods. Their method is applicable for building and cable state bridges. If subset of deflection and forces at the nodes are provided, compared with other standard observability problems, two issues arise. The first one is that nonlinear unknown variable appear, and the second, 
The mechanical and geometrical properties of the structures are coupled with the deflection at the node. To solve these problems, an algebraic method that uh, adopts the standard observability problem to deal with SSI is proposed. Their method is, uh, limited to, uh, is not limited to lattice frame uh, as also trusses, plates and finite elements uh, can be analyzed. The traditional application of stiffness method assumes that all the characteristics of the beams are known and therefore unknown parameters are only found in vector delta and vector f. However, in new stiffness matrix method, or better to say that stiffness matrix method for SSI, the unknown and known vari uh, variables could be found in all three matrices of F, K, and D. Here, we, uh, in the right-hand side, uh, is the equilibrium equation of the stiffness matrix, uh, and as I told you, K is partially unknown. And with the purpose of determining the unknown parameters, a modified system of equation can be written like this in which products of unknown are transferred in vector of delta star and k matrices become matrix of uh, known coefficient. Once the boundary conditions and applied forces through non-destructive tests in the nodes have been defined, we can carry out our inverse analysis to acquire unknown parameters. The known information is clustered in a subset of delta 1 of vector delta star and subset of, uh, subset of f1 of vector f, respectively. Or better to say that parameters with subindices of 0 related to unknown and with the subindices of 1 relates to the known <coughs> parameters. Afterward, the, by solving the equation and transferring the unknown to the left side of the equation and the known one to the right hand side, we will rearrange the equation in this equivalent form, where 0 and, nine and the i are the null and identity matrices respectively. And at the end, here uh, at the center of the slides, uh, we have the particular solution which can be obtained by mathematical packages and at the second part is the solution of homogeneous system of equation. Matrix V is null space of coefficient matrix. To check if the system has a solution, it's sufficient to check the null space of matrix B. To have better recognition of observability method, I will explain uh, OM, which is contraction form of observability method, as an example about real structure. In this picture, we have real tunnel, and uh, in the right-hand side, we have the discretization of the tunnel. I will drive only two elements with different material properties as E1 nu1 and E2 nu2. These two elements are subjected to, const uh, to constrained load. The stiffness matrix of the finite element model is, divide from, uh, is defined from general relation with the coefficients of B, D, and T, which are strain displacement matrix, elastic matrix, and thickness respectively. By assuming the thickness as a constant, the integration will be taken over the area of the element where for plane strain is equal to 1. To connect 6 nodes of finite element model with necessary number of constant coefficients of approximation function, we have to use Pascal triangle. We use triangular elements for our problem since triangular elements are one of the best elements that can be used for modeling of irregular boundaries and have been used extensively for continuum stress analysis. Second step is about introducing boundary condition to the system. In vector delta, boundary condition of node 1, 4, and 7, as well as measurements, are defined. First, we have to establish equilibrium equation for this finite element model. 
And at the below, we have the global stiffness matrix, which uh, contains the uh, mechanical parameters of the structure, such as Young modulus thickness and Poisson ratio. Displacement vector, which uh, we define the boundary condition, and the right side of the equation is a vector of forces. In the third step, we have to rearrange the system of equation. The main system can be rearranged in an equivalent form so that the, online, the unknown variables appear in the left hand side and the known variable in the right hand side as follow, where 0 and i are the null and identity matrices. In general, this system does, uh, doesn't need to be compatible. It means that matrix D must satisfy some condition for the system to have a solution. To check if the system has a solution, it's sufficient to calculate the null space of matrix B and check if the V transpose times uh, D is equal to zero. If it holds, if it holds, the system is compatible. Otherwise, it has no solution. Because of the complexity of the matrix, I just drive two columns, which are two columns of the stiffness matrix, which are related to H1 and V1. In this level, we will face with uh, one difficulty. The case is that when two or more elements converge in the same node of the structure, some element of the matrix may include information from different elements. In this case, it's vital to simplify stiffness matrix and split the column to the required number of the columns. Moreover, the associated deflections in vector z should be increased to the number of uh, split columns. In this step, we have to transfer, uh, transfer the unknown to the vector z and make uh, matrix B as a noun coefficient matrix. And in this step, uh, as we can see, the system of equation that all the unknowns are transferred to the vector of z. The next step consists uh, consist of identifying the partition matrix K00 and K10 and building matrix B. And then the null space of the matrix is modified by imposing the boundary conditions and measure the variable and update the modified si stiffness matrix, I mean K star, the columns associated with measured the uh, variable are multiplied by the corresp uh, corresponding values and the associated factor removed from the columns uh, matrix of variable delta star. In this case, the variable with associated null values lead to null columns of the modified stiffness matrix. And also, we have uh, some zeros on the left side of the equation and they are because of the boundary condition in this step we apply recursive process to obtain the unknowns a recursive process is used to minimize the number of required deflection in measurement sets to obtain the unknown parameters this process takes the advantage of the connectivity of the elements in the stiffness matrix that is included in the partition matrix of uh, K in the system. In this way, when the initial observability analy analysis and deflection <coughs> forces or structural parameter is observed, this information might help to observe the new parameters in in adjacent elements through the recursive process. In this analysis, the observed information is su success, uh, successively introduced as uh, input data in the observability analysis. In the below, uh, we have single and couple unknown variables. In the first step, we could identify some, un uh, some unknown such as M1 and M2. The first series of our measurements input are U5 and uh, U8, and it leads to identification of Q1 and Q2. In the next step, by using the obtained 
noun variables in the recursive method we are able to identify c1 and c2 as well as uh, the rest of the unknowns and at the end some equation appear in our mind how many measurement do we need to identify the whole structure and the second one is that how to displace the sensor in the structure and how to choose our measurement depending on the number of the measurement and parameters we can conclude that if the measurements are less than unknowns i mean if the number of the measurements are less than number of unknowns we cannot identify everything and if they are equal, sometimes we can identify all of them and it depends on the placement of the sensor. And by using the more number of measurement, we can identify all of them.